Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Tonight we're back here, back with Ant Dude. And today we're actually checking a video game review of his on Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Now, we actually played this game a while back. We actually completed it. Well, at least the main story, and we can save Fargo's soul, or Leon's soul. I know it's been a while, but i just been feeling a little off. But anyway, so how about we hop in and get to um, what Ant Dude thought of Kirby's latest adventure? So be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's check it out. Guys, it does me great pleasure to say that Kirby has had quite a great history since his jump to 3D. It's okay As time goes on, more and more games start to show up that feel like they justify the years and generations of fan bases begging for their existence. Dream games, essentially. Hey, Crash and Spyro got full-blown remakes, Pokemon Snap got a sequel, Sonic Mania exists. Fire Emblem Gosh. is not only relevant, but it's a big deal for the company. These are all things that are just kind of accepted now, but that is after what felt like an eternity for the people that were asking for them. Okay. So, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. This is it. We're finally here. A fully 3D Kirby game. It's something that I and damn near everybody has been asking for since, I don't know, the original 3D quote unquote debut with 64 The Crystal Shards 22 years ago? Regardless of the game's quality. This is a big deal. Woo! To say that I was excited for Kirby and the Forgotten Land, that would be a bit of an understatement. Yeah, for those enough. who may not be familiar with me, I am a hardcore Kirby fan. I've been there since the beginning, through all of the ups and downs with this franchise, I have been there for basically <laughs> my entire life, and I don't think any single game in this series has ever felt as important or impactful as this one. I think... Well, let's be honest. I think we're all, all a little nervous about this game considering the whole mouthful mode. I think. <laughs> but after a while, you'd be surprised. Even I was a little nervous, but I still bought the game and I had a blast. <laughs> but yeah, after a while, I think we just went along with it because Kirby's going to be Kirby no matter where. <laughs> anyway. I think it's important to view the Forgotten Land as the start of a new phase of Kirby. You see, the last four mainline games all worked off of the same gameplay loop. Traditional side-scrolling style with a new core gimmick mm -hmm. in each game to spice things up from time to time. Definitely gave us Sounds some correct. incredible adventures, but by the time Star Allies came around, the Pink Puffball's big HD debut, yeah, things were starting to get pretty stale. There were Fair a couple enough. of eShop games that were simple expansions of mini-games from existing handheld games. They popped up around this time. There was also a port of Epic Yarn for the 3DS too, which was really weird because the console was already basically dead at this point. Kirby was starting to feel There's fairly devoid of creativity as of late. That's all I'm saying. Aside from the lore, of course, because, oh my Holy god, hell. after the lore dump in yeah, Star well, Allies, I think, you, you know, I think the developers really needed a nap after that insanity. But in a statement after all of Star Allies DLC was completed, the director stated that it was time to plan the next stage of Kirby. And, well, the only logical step was to finally take the jump into the third dimension and finally flex some of that HD muscle for good. And the result? Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Yeah, there were plenty of reasons to be excited. Mm -hmm. All right, that's enough preamble. Honestly, there was just a lot to go over to really understand just why this game is a big deal. <laughs> But I'm really feeling that Kirby itch to scratch once again. Let's finally do it. Let's talk about Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Mm -hmm. The story begins with Kirby enjoying his carefree day around Dreamland when all of a sudden, chaos. Yikes. This is the Big plot star. to every Big Kirby game. Uh... Big fan of Kirby's shocked oh. face here, by the way. Oh, oh. Uh, Big Patrick oh. star energy here. <laughs> much... Up in the sky, a massive portal opens, sucking up everything around. Star blocks, Waddle Dees, a butterfly, oh god. And yes, <laughs> of course, our Kirby. Boy Kirby. We then cut to our hero waking up washed ashore on a beach in a totally different land, but in a setting that I swear I've seen before. Oh, there we go. <laughs> It does feel like bad. And food. now we gotta find out how to get back home. And also save a ton of waddledees along the way. Whatever these odd little crow creatures have on their agenda, they are caging up all of the adorable waddledees oh, they can come across, soon. and that is no good. Let's look at how cute they are. They don't deserve that. We got a new friend joining us in our adventure, too. This Alpha. is Alphalin, an adorable flying chinchilla with massive ears, a big nick in one of them, and I didn't trust this little thing from the moment I laid my eyes on him. 
I will save the sweet details for a spoiler section later on in the video, but I mean, come on. His name is basically Elf Villain. And after the previous games, this series is one of the reasons why I have trust issues. In general, yes, it is a pretty straightforward plot. I know many are probably expecting as much, but considering we now find ourselves in essentially a post-apocalyptic world here, plus yeah, the pause screen no Look longer gives us our little nuggets of lore Look like it used to, which is kind of upsetting. I did honestly expect really the game to go a little a deeper into it. things, similar to how Planet Robobot did. We do get a lot of information by the end of the journey, but for basically the entire time up until that point, it's all just a means to do the typical lovely Kirby stuff of running, jumping, and inhaling, but this time in a 3D setting. Like, you have all of these new enemies and bosses as a part of the brand new hostile clan known as the Beast Pack. And again, while there is context given before the credits roll, it's all basically irrelevant until then. Big, scary, furry things bad, defeat them, easy peasy. Well, aside from Tropic Woods, actually, the Forgotten Lands Wispy Woods variant is the only end of world boss that isn't a part of the Beast Pack. He's just- Yeah, that's a first. There. Though, to be fair, Kirby deciding to completely obliterate a tree just because he happened Standard. to run into it is basic Pink Puffball 101, so that checks out. Yeah, As wrong. for why it's not in the Beast Pack, it's the Soul Patch. It's gotta be the Soul Patch. Maybe they'll explain that in the DLC. But yeah. yes, we are finally in 3D. This is so damn cool. There was always so much speculation at just how exactly this jump was going to happen. Would it be like that canceled GameCube game or go for a more puzzle focus like Blowout Blast? Maybe we'll try an open world playground, something like Mario Odyssey. Well, essentially what we got is something that leans a little bit closer towards 3D world here. Linear stages with a ton of wiggle room for exploration and secret finding. Mm -hmm. And it all looks absolutely gorgeous too. Kirby to games typically do have a great art style, but there is something so magical about a platformer with massive landscapes that all feel like they're real natural environments rather than places feeling a bit too video gamey, you know, like 3D World. From amusement parks and abandoned malls to more basic tropes like winter wonderlands and desert wastelands, this is definitely the best Kirby has ever looked. Not the most creative, Planet Robobot still takes that honor, but this is still really, really yeah. good. Check this out. You can cool. walk with this Awoofy enemy through the entire mall, and, and he's just going about his day. This game is amazing. And if you have ever played a single Kirby game before, it all clicks immediately. From the second you take your first steps on the beach, it is clear that Kirby controls like a dream in 3D. For one, he auto runs now, that's really nice, as well as auto swallows enemies as a default option, really like that as well. All of the included abilities feel great to control, hitboxes for the enemies are the perfect size, so much so that the engine was actually designed to register a hit, no matter what, as long as it looks like such from the camera perspective, which is just oh. such clever design. Projectiles have a little bit of auto-aim that ensure that you never have to be 100% precise to hit your target, but it doesn't guarantee a hit no matter what. It is just such good control, it feels so good, and then dude, Kirby has a dodge roll? First Pokemon introduced it with Arceus, and now Kirby, I am all for more games having dodge rolls, I'm just saying. And, the dodge and on top of that, if that. you time your dodge roll correctly, right as you're about to take damage, time will slow down and you can score some extra hits. Woo. This is perfect. Move over Elden Ring, this is the game with superior combat. The levels also have challenges now. On top of collecting Waddle Dees that are hidden, or simply a reward for completing the stage, there are also a lot of other little things to consider as you're See? playing. Finding secret rooms, removing a series of crudely drawn wanted posters, tackling some bosses either without taking damage or with a specific ability, bringing ducklings back to their mother. Oh Aww. my god, this is amazing. This is our primary replay value. The user interface is brilliant I mean, here too, by the way. If you happen to, to do those. one of the missions without yeah, realizing it, a little unobtrusive ticker will pop up to let you know, and then it just goes hey. away. Yeah, That's it. And if you finished a level while missing a few of the challenges, the game will show you one of them so you can now run through the level again looking for something new. I adore this idea. Older Kirby games have had a bad habit of hiding some unlockables behind really obscure methods. It certainly created replayability, but more so out of annoyance than intelligent design. Now that stages are more expansive than ever before, this was 100% yeah. the best way to Thank keep you. the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay interesting, and I definitely hope it comes back in the future. And this next part may be obvious, but the soundtrack is really damn good too. It's to be expected with Kirby, obviously, so yes, as we all anticipated, we have another full soundtrack of really, really great stuff. 
with catchy beats and immersive atmospheric jams all over the place. To be honest though, I don't it's think an anything thing here too. really comes close to some of the series' best stuff, but it's still really rare to have a Kirby game with a mediocre soundtrack, and this is no different. Like, all of the level themes are either really, really good, or just kinda good, and that is a totally perfect range to have. Although, you know what, the invincibility theme is now a sick rock guitar remix, so... Maybe I'm lying to myself here. Oh, and uh, big ups to the King Dedede theme, by the way, because, oh man, it is so good in this game. It's like the best it's ever been. Oh, and the design too. Dude, the King looks more like his Crystal Shards design than ever before, and that was like his best one. God, it's so it's good. I love it. Native. I love it so much. I can't wait for them to change it in the next game. Let's see. The two brand new abilities are also great additions. First off, there's Drill, which lets you burrow into the ground and then pop out, well. impaling enemies in the process, and Ranger. Yeah, they gave Kirby a gun. Mm -hmm. Kirby's packing heat now. Everybody should be terrified. Yeah, He's not here to cover. save the world from the apocalypse. He's gonna cause He's it. He's the one who caused it. <laughs> Overall, we're only working with 12 abilities here. A shockingly little amount, actually, considering the previous games had more than double that, but here they all have extra yeah, polish to ensure they play great in the case. third dimension. As a result, it actually doesn't feel like there's any filler here. Tornado is damn satisfying to maneuver, aiming fire in 360 degrees is awesome, and the same goes for bomb. Being able to chuck the bombs in whatever direction you see fit, it's great. You can even upgrade abilities now see? too, making them more but powerful and changing up some first. of their properties in the process. And getting to experiment with all of them and seeing what the upgrades bring to the table is so much fun. Especially in the boss battles, honestly jumping to this third dimension has given us some of the coolest fights the series has seen yet. It is awesome! The battle with Chloraline, oh it's so... Oh, it's so good. Kind of a neat bit of fan service here too that I noticed. For the first time ever, Hammer has its own dedicated enemy with Mookie, and Tornado has its first ever boss with Florina. I don't know, considering these abilities have been here since the beginning, kinda cool there's now more ways to get them. Oh yeah, that's right, Upgraded Needle is another massive Kirby 64 reference too. I love it. The more references to 64, the better in my opinion. Now, uh, uh, Sleep is still as useless as ever. But hey, it heals you at the same time. And then when you upgrade it, you pull Jesus. out an entire bed. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty good. Definitely a good but chance to heal. But of course, the big new gameplay gimmick this time around is... Mouthful, Mouthful mode. There it is. <laughs> it's one of the greatest names I've ever heard in my life. Dude, when the direct happened and they showed Kirby inhale a car, <laughs> and then they just cut to gameplay like nothing happened, I lost it. I love this so much. Okay, so basically the world is now littered with items that are too big for Kirby to inhale and swallow like normal, but damn it, he's certainly gonna try anyway. True. A vending machine with a drink can ammo count, a light bulb to brighten up dark areas, car mouth lets you drive fast and furious plowing through everything in your path. Oh my God, you could be a stairs. Oh Staircase. man, you could be filled with water and have jiggle physics. This is incredible. <laughs> Mechanically, this feels very similar to Super Mario Odyssey in design. You're always just happen to run into the object you need for a puzzle that is right ahead of you. You got mm -hmm. floors that can very clearly be broken. Oh. Well, there just happens to be a cone right next to it. Go for it. Half of the fun is really just watching Kirby operate with items that are simply too big for him to get his entire mouth around. But gameplay wise, they're all given quite a wide range of utility. My favorite is probably the ring mouth, because not only is it visually incredible, but in practice, its wind bursts are not only very powerful against enemies, but they're also integral to moving within the boats. And all of the level designs around the boat are super fun. This is realistically why it is totally fine there are only 12 copy abilities in this adventure, because on True. top of that, there are also 13 different mouthful modes to play around with, and they essentially so act the same. These abilities. are just funnier. And if you're ready to put your skills to the true test, well, each world also houses a bunch of treasure road challenges, where Which you put you up against a series of specific obstacles upgrades. for whatever ability or mouthful mode they throw at you. Sort of mm -hmm. harkening back to the ability challenges from Return to Dreamland. These are all timed too, and man, it's not required to pass the target times for them. I'm pretty sure those don't work towards 100% completion, but man, I had to go for them anyway, and some of them? Man, you really can't screw up a single time. They get stressful. Here is me being 0. 0.32 seconds off from passing one. Two. This is what true pain feels like, I think. Jeez. Forgotten Land easily has some of here. the best utilization of abilities and general transformations this franchise has ever seen. This is a game where Kirby can both handle a gun and become or a cool storage wolf. container 
this franchise operates on a different level. Mm -hmm. I will say though, to counter those who will inevitably say I am way too biased here, that I do think that Forgotten Land isn't as groundbreaking or inventive as it could have been in this first 3D adventure. I mean, you know, Malcolm first Mode game is incredible, but if you expect. treat it as a sort of copyability adjacent option, well, then yeah, <laughs> this can more or less be boiled down to it's the Kirby you know and love just now in the third dimension. It didn't need to be any more than that. This is not a complaint. I'm just saying. Whenever you... Well, to be fair, in my opinion, just sometimes you gotta know, like, if this is gonna work. Like, if they put it at all and it turns out to be bad, well, they're not gonna go it again. But if they play safe and it turns out great, then, hey, we got something that works. And I gotta say, it's pretty nice. <laughs> anyway, back to the town. If you feel like taking a break and not continuing on your adventure, you can always take a pit stop back to your main hub world, Waddle Dee Town, where all of the little waddles that you've collected along your journey return to rebuild and reinvigorate the economy. There is so much to do yeah, here. Look, this oh, is where the stuff? ability upgrades take place using the rare stones that you get from the treasure roads as See? a currency. There's Kirby's house where Nintendo likes to remind you just how many Kirby games they made in the last generation, as well as the primary location where you can take a nap Oh my god, these games are so damn adorable. There's gotcha machines now too. You see, figurines are one of the main collectibles now, similar to the keychains and the stickers of Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot respectively. Mm -hmm. And rather than grinding out some easy levels for the ones that you're missing, here is where you can use your primary star currency to get them instead. You can also zoom in on specific figures and watch Kirby look at them. Every model viewer in every game ever should have a giant Kirby in the background now, let's be honest. We got the Coliseum here, basically giving us the arena mode that we're all used to. Plow through all of the bosses and mid-bosses that you can in one piece, and get rewarded at the end. This is also where we find Meta Knight. I love that this is where they put him as a boss instead of shoehorning him in as a bad guy in the story. It is one of the better fights in the game too. There's this cool bit where he like puts his sword down for a second and you can inhale it and take the sword ability. And when Meta Knight realizes he doesn't have his trusty sword to go with, he will fly out, come back and use the sword from Kirby's Adventure. This game is so cool. And no spoilers here, we'll talk about this later, but yes, the oh, yeah, true yeah. arena equivalent, Ultimate Cup Z, is just as challenging as you would expect it to be. Damn. Expect a lot of torment. This is the home of three minigames too. First up, we have Waddle Dee's Cafe, where Kirby works retail, and you have to provide customers with their items in a timely manner, else they storm off in a huff. And there's a lunch rush portion too, where you work at a more intense pace. This. As Ooh. someone who used to work retail in the past, I'm does not really trigger the there. most positive of memories, but a as a minigame, it's fun. <laughs> I promise. Next sure. up, there's Fishing Pond. Quite Ooh. frankly, any game quickly goes up a few points if it has a fishing minigame. That is the frontiers. <laughs> it's a series of quick time button presses, all in an effort to get the big boy. Ooh. Big fan of this one. The and then- 10,000 grams. Oh. Oh, yeah, a, oh, oh my god. Oh my god. It's it Tilt and Tumble 2? No, 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 sorry. It's Tilt and Roll Kirby. Whatever, it's the same thing. I'm calling mm -hmm. it Tilt and Tumble 2. Using uh -huh. the Switch's motion controls, you roll these little Kirby balls to their destinations across three levels, as well as hard versions of those levels. Yikes. Oh my god, just please, just give me Tilt and Tumble 2 already, Nintendo. Like, really, come on. You guys made the expanded eShop releases of the 3DS's sub-games. There's also that canceled mm -hmm. Tilt and Tumble 2 for the GameCube prototype from back in the day. Give it to me. Give it to me. So yeah, overall, there is no shortage of things to do here. Mm -hmm. Between the score challenges of the mini games and the Coliseum, all of the treasure roads, gotcha figures to collect, abilities to upgrade, on top of just a really fun adventure, that feeling of sort of being underwhelmed by star allies is not something to worry about here whatsoever. Forgotten Land nails it. I will say, I couldn't help but hope there was like a meta nightmare mode to unlock. That would have been amazing, given how minimal his role is in the campaign. But given how much is here, I really can't be all too upset. True. Much. May as well mention co-op here as well. Throughout most of the game, you can hand a controller to a friend and take control of Bandana D to save the day as a team. I love Bandana D as much as the next guy, but it is a shame that player two can't be their own Kirby. This means that only player one gets the full treasure trove of copy abilities and mouthful modes, while D is just kinda there. But the real crime is you no longer kiss your friends to share health, you high five instead. Zero out of 10 game, Nintendo. It's pretty yeah, obvious I guess they didn't by want now, the but yes, going up Kirby and the Forgotten Land is a massive success. It may not be the best game in the series, that is a debate that can go on for Forever. generations, but it's definitely the best since Planet Robobot, and the most exciting since... 
God, oh, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, Epic Yarn, mm -hmm. I guess. That was like the last time I saw as many people excited for a Kirby game before this, so. I don't know. Yeah. Could be Return the Dreamland. It's a big too, deal. I don't know. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic game. The developers at HAL Labs should be sure, very hey, pleased the with themselves. <laughs> but now, the let's ending? talk about the end game. Okay, obvious spoiler warning here. We're going to be talking about a whole lot. So if you want to stay pure and you want to stay unspoiled, then go ahead and jump to this time frame and you will be safe. <laughs> you still here? Yep. Good. Oh my god, what is this end game? Hey. Yeah, it does get a little crazy at the end. Trust me. I played the game. Oof. But yeah, for those who haven't played it, you might want to get on that before you... You can pause this video, come on back when you're ready. I will be here. <laughs> I mean, pretty much upload it. So anyway, so... Here we go. Major spoilers, end games, and coming up. Here we go. Hey, since you're now in the spoiler section, that means you must know about the mini-boss bridge level later on in the game. Well, check yeah. this out. If you go off the beaten path for the hidden Maxim Tomato oh. and climb the building off-screen, go up this ladder, collect the treasure, and then jump through this window, you'll be thrust onto an alternate path of harder oh. battles. Why? We already knew that, right? I mean, there's no reason to do it either. There's no unlockable or anything like that. Celebration of coins at the end just to say, hey, you found it. But I mean, come on, you knew that already, right? Not really. No? You didn't know that? Well, I gave you the spoiler warning for a reason. You're welcome. Earlier on, oh, I mentioned no. how when it came to the oh, plot, yeah. we have essentially nothing to really work with Maybe aside from simply wild. moving forward because that's the obvious thing to do. Well, that's until right before the final boss when the game gives you total whiplash. After taking down the mind-controlled masked DDD. DDD and freeing him from said control, our heroes try to make their escape. However, the king sacrifices himself to save a Waddle D that tripped, and we move on without him, being greeted by this oddly creepy title card for Lab, Lab Discoverer. Discoverer. Oh boy. In this elevator we find ourselves in, we suddenly get... Automatic language detection activated. Uh, vo voice language? acting? Yeah, and this oddly creepy audio that hypes up basically like a field ultimate trip to form. meet the ultimate life form, IDF-86. I a think being Sonic wants to, be to take a word with because you was destroying everything in sight as one. soon as it showed up. We then oh, cuts all of the taken Waddle Dees running on hamster wheels against their will, and then we hear about a warp experiment that oh. failed that caused a portion of IDF-86 to split off and hasn't been found since. We then go through these oh. big ominous double doors and... Oh! Hello! Ooh. This is Leongar, the king of the Beast Pack, who tells us that F-86 once gave people power, and those people left the world behind to enter a land of dreams. And now, Leongar hopes to get this power too, as well as the rest of the Beast Pack, as a part of this forgotten land. Oh! He said it! He said the thing! All of those waddled- It actually begs the question, like, remember, this world and Popstar seem to separate it. Like, you think the people from their world came over the pop star and that's how we got the waddle dees which really begs the question doesn't it i don't know but this forgotten land i thought leon gar leon gar was talking about you know dreamland i mean it's literally called dreamland a land of dreams right huh i mean i'm not sure that's actually true but i mean considering where kirby lore goes sometimes I would have put it past them. Jeez. Oh, I know, I still remember this, but I'm surprised my pad hasn't covered that yet. But anyway. LDs spinning on those hamster wheels? Well, that's to power this experiment. They weren't just being caged because they were too adorable. There was a much more sinister plot behind the scenes. You then fight Leon Gar, and of course, you take him down no problem, and then F-86, whose actual name is Fecto Forgo, takes control of his mind, and then... Everything this? shall be consumed. Yikes. What the f*** oh. is this franchise? <laughs> but yes, okay, if it wasn't obvious at this point, Elphalin is the part of Fecto Forgo that split away, and all of the energy conversion with the Waddle Dees and the wheels, these multi-dimensional portals, mind control, this was all in an attempt to restore Fecto Forgo to full power. <sighs> oh, oh man, okay. Oh hey, check that out, it escaped its confinement out. too. That's cool and not scary at all. Ah, it then absorbs the minions of the beast pack and grows into this obscene amorphous blob. Ah! That's the nightmare fuel I was waiting yeah. for. Run, then you gotta fight it while also running away from it. Oh my god, what, <laughs> what, what is happening now? 
Just when you thought you were safe, unfortunately, it is able to grab Elphalin and scurry up to the roof, where we now meet Fecto Elphalus, the true final boss. I will not shy away from it, I definitely got baited to thinking that Elphalin itself was the main villain, but... You know what, man? I don't care. This is so damn cool, and Elphilus is such a fantastic design. Everything about this is exactly Whoa. what I wanted. Oh god, and then the final segment. Okay, so then you defeat it, and then opens up one final portal oh, and tries no. to bring the entirety of Popstar in to collide with the planet that you're on, but with perfect timing, a giant big rig big comes in All and falls to the ground, uh, uh. and then of course, you're able to mouse mode, mode it. Why wouldn't you be able to? And then you go on this Charge! insane race against time across these falling buildings as this rock remix of the invincibility theme plays. And then you got some quick time God. segments that's pushing back Elphilus's energy. And then you obliterate it like it's a Dragon Ball Z villain. What the truck? Yeah! Hey! What did this game turn into? This is, this is amazing. Finally, the day is saved. Elphalin sacrifices himself in the final moments to close the massive portal that's still there. It's obvious before the credits that he's actually totally fine. All of the members of the Beast Pack are now free from their mind control. And man, no, no, this was this was exactly what I wanted. I do kind of wish the game teased this a little bit more throughout the story rather than giving me extreme whiplash Yikes. by the end, but honestly, that whiplash was part of the greatness. I fully expect Fecto Forgo or something to that nature returning in the future similar to Maybe. Dark Matter being a recurring villain of before. And I am very excited to I mean, see what insanity it'll bring with it. Itself. But yeah, that's not that. really the end though, because as a post game, we then unlock the Isolated Isles Forgo Dreams, where you run through truncated and harder versions of every previous world, and collect pieces of Leon Gar's soul so we can go to where Forgo left him and restore him to his normal self, Leon. This is all- You know, actually I did this too and I gotta thank you guys, if you didn't show me this, I wouldn't have the experience I had too. <laughs> like, rewriting everything, having to go- well, there were a few times I accidentally just went ahead without realizing- Oh shoot, forgot a soul. <laughs> but still, it was- it was really fun, and it actually just gave a really heartfelt good ending, you know? I won't spoil it here, but you'll know what I mean. Moving on. A dream world created by Fecto Forgo in an effort to regain its strength and build up an army of strong beasts in the process. When it comes to the gameplay here, I really like this. This does sort of act like the previous game's Meta Nightmare or DDD tour, but you just play as Kirby here instead, and it does kind of double as a hard mode. Especially for the bosses. Oh. Every single boss is harder, they have a new color palette, a bunch of new moves. Oh man, that's so cool. These are some of the best fights in the game, without a doubt. The game is also very friendly about letting you did. know if you've gotten every single that. soul fragment in an area before moving on to the next one. Thank God, makes this process a whole lot more seamless. It all culminates with a battle there against Forgo oh, Leon, where it becomes very apparent that Fecto is really trying its best to get its way. But because you're the almighty Kirby, you take Leon what? out like he's nothing, and then it's time to finally take out Soul oh, Forgo itself. Eh? You again. Uh oh. Oh, I remember Fun this. Fact, My every first Kirby fan is afraid of butterflies. Morphonite. That's part of the canon. That one butterfly that got sucked in during the opening cutscene? Damn it, I should have seen this coming. Wouldn't you know it? Yep. It's Morpho Knight! Hey man, okay, going forward, if we're just gonna expect Morpho Knight to be the secret final boss rather than Galacta Knight, I will be more than okay I mean, with that. Got a better this fight is no so sense, damn but, cool, yeah. and I hate butterflies now. A lot of Fecto Forgo's powers can be seen in Morpho's moveset, too. I'm pretty sure the idea is Morpho isn't just super powerful on his I mean, own, but he absorbs part, whatever Morpho. he comes in contact with. Pretty much the future of this dude of the is gonna be terrifying. But before long, you take yep. him down as Goodbye. well, and we finally have the chance to restore Leon to his original pure form. And all is finally well with the world. Forgo too, with the final victory dance. Oh, but wait, we're not done yet! <laughs> you see, now we go back to the Colosseum, where we have access to Ultimate Cup Z, that where you go through do. all of the harder forms of the bosses from the Isolated Isles. And Morpho is here to fight, of course, as to be expected, but it turns out Soul Forgo oh. gained a new body after absorbing Morpho Knight's power, turning oh. into Chaos oh. Elphilus. This never ends. Of course well, it has a bunch of new scary moves to, to deal with, but that okay, that's now. fine. You eventually take that down too, and then... Oh! Oh no. And here we are. 
It turned I, into an evil yeah? blob of darkness, and then it quickly sucked me in Ooh. and killed me. So that was fun. I had to do the entire Coliseum again after this part, so that's fine. You know, it's it's Yeesh, fine. That's hot. Also, HAL Laboratories, you think you're slick, you're not getting past me. One of the moves here is a direct callback to draw see a soul from Canvas Curse. Really, really cool. I am just so happy that Whoa. no matter what this series does, what dimension we're in, what Kirby puts his mouth on, it's Ew. always a safe assumption that we're gonna attempt to dethrone God at the end. And or damn it, an Forgotten team. Land succeeds with that as well. I love this game so much. Oh man, okay, so yeah, that, that was that was a whole lot to go yeah, over. But yes, usual. Kirby and the Forgotten Land. God, I am, I am just so happy the era of 3D Kirby is finally here. In an interview oh, with now. the development oh. team, it was immediately confirmed that, yes, there will be more 3D and potentially even 2D games in the future. The director believes that Sweet. Kirby has, quote, unlimited potential, and he hopes the teams can be, quote, even more wild and free when it comes Ooh. to following games. The years of mediocrity and subpar releases may be over, my friends. A new Who golden knows? era of Kirby is here, and I cannot wait to see what comes next. Mm. It is a damn good time to be a Kirby fan. Amen. In the grand scheme of things, this is not my favorite Kirby game. Planet Robobot still has my heart and actually a few other Kirby games as well. But if you wanted to make an argument that this is the best that Kirby has ever been, it would be totally valid. And considering Star Allies got a whole bunch of DLC post-launch, who knows, we may be revisiting this game in the future like we did with that one. With all that out you of the way, know. I wanna thank you all so much for letting me talk about Kirby for like 30 minutes. It's Kirby's 30th anniversary after all. It just made total sense. I felt a spark in me with this game that I haven't felt for this franchise in a long time, so that's pretty cool. But you know what's also cool oh. is I recently surpassed 500,000 subscribers huh. right around the same time this game released. That's pretty poetic. So I'm thinking, next time you see me, it's time to celebrate. We got chonky Kirby content coming up, so yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> and luckily we already covered his uh, video on the copy abilities, so we're good. Anyway, there you go. Uh, honestly, yeah, I agree. I'm in the arena, which I have yet to do, so I'm actually have to try that out. So until now, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll keep an eye out for the Kirby franchise, which Return to Dream is not essentially getting a remake, so I'll probably do that for a live stream. But... Until that comes out, I'll have to keep doing my game games. So, until then, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys around. Howdy, howdy, everybody.